in this video today we will be talking about uh, shearing forces and bending moments in the topic of uh, advanced ship stability so this is a theoretical discussion and i'll show you briefly on how to solve uh, numericals involved in this topic and then in my future videos i'll take up more examples of uh, numericals and uh, show you how to solve it and draw the curves for the shearing forces and bending moments as well all right so shearing forces uh, will be referred to as sf and bending moments will be referred to as uh, bm uh, so over here uh, a vessel in harbor or at sea encounters uh, various and varied forces which can generally be classified into a statical forces and b dynamical forces now statical forces are due to number one weight of ship and or cargo which varies along the ship's length whereas uh, another reason for statical forces is due to the buoyancy uh, due to vessel being a not of box shape type and due to her floating in an uneven keel condition buoyancy also varies along the ship's length because of which along the ship it experiences different magnitude of forces along the ship's length the third reason for the statical forces are uh, is the direct hydrostatic pressure from the water as i have shown you in the figure below so you can see while the ship is submerged in the water from all directions and the water pressure acts on the ship's structure or the ship's hull the fourth reason for the statistical forces or statical forces rather is concentrated loads such as that of anchors mast engines etc the second type of forces is the dynamical forces dynamical forces are the forces created in a seaway due to pitching heaving rolling caused by wind and waves and all these forces are constantly changing and they act in different planes at different times hence strength of ships that is distribution of appropriate materials along the ship's length is a complex issue which needs detailed calculations when we move to stress stress is the mutual attraction between the particles of the material to maintain their relative positions when an external load is applied to the material or in simple terms it can also be defined as load applied per unit area strain on the other hand is the deformation produced in the material or change in the shape of the material due to the stress applied as you see in the below figure below elastic limit stress is proportional to strain now if i can plot the curve for a material where stress is on the y axis and strain is on the x axis you can see how the how the material is initially in its elastic limit initially and then it as i subject it to more stress as the stress increases upwards as the stress increases at one point of time the material experiences the ultimate stress after which it experiences the breaking stress so the elasticity of the material initially helps it to encounter or ex or rather absorb the stress after which it has to undergo a breaking stress ships suffer shearing stress and or bending stress under conditions of improper loading in rough weather in extreme cases the vessel gets lost due to failure of ship structure caused by shearing stress and or bending stress a ship can thus be compared to a simple beam where if the beam is bent initially the tensile strength of the vessel or the tensile strength of the beam helps it to experience or absorb the stress but after a while if the stress starts to pile up it will bend the comprehensive stresses and strains makes the steel bar or a beam bend just like a vessel shearing stress tends to break or shear the material across shearing stress is caused by shearing forces shearing force at any point on a structure is the algebraic sum of all the vertical forces to one side of that point on the structure as you see here on the beam 
the forces are shown and the force acting upwards that is R1 and R2 will be positive and the force acting downwards that is 4 kilograms, 6 kilograms and 5 kilograms is shown as negative. Therefore, the shearing force in this case at point X, this is point X here, will be equal to plus R1 minus 4. R1 is positive because the force is acting upwards and 4 is negative because it is acting downwards. So the shearing force at point X will be R1 minus 4. The shearing force at point Z, that is this point here, will be R1 minus 4 minus 6 minus 5 or R1 minus 15 kg which is a sum total of 4, 6 and 5. Vertical force acting upwards to the left of the point in question is taken as positive and vertical force acting on the left of the point in question but downwards is taken as negative. All right. On the other hand, bending moment at any point on a structure is the algebraic sum of all the moments of forces about that point acting to one side to the point in question. So if I go back to the above diagram here, have a look at this diagram and draw it on a paper and then I'll show you how to calculate the bending moments about some of these points. Alright, so to find reactions R1 and R2 above, take moments about A. So clockwise moments about that point are taken as positive and anti-clockwise moments about that point are taken as negative. So in this above case, it will be 4 by 2 multiplied by 6 by 5 and again I'll show you why it is 4 by 2 so you can see 4 kilograms is acting downwards but the distance is 2 meters here similarly 6 kilograms is acting downwards but the total distance about which it acts is 2 plus 3 equals 5 similarly you have 5 kilograms acting downwards but the total distance that it acts on is 2 plus 3 plus 2 which is equal to 7 alright so that's how it's worked out so 4 multiplied by 2 plus 6 multiplied by 5 plus 5 multiplied by 7 and then the last bit becomes negative because it is acting anti-clockwise and not clockwise so R2 by 10 equals 0 so if you add these together 8 plus 30 plus 35 and take R2 by 10 on the other side this is the equation and then you can calculate R2 as 7.3 but R1 plus R2 equals 15 kilograms because it is the sum total of all the weights acting downwards so R1 will be 15 minus 7.3 which is equal to 7.7 .7. where did the 7.3 come from 7.3 is nothing but R2 so we have replaced R2 with the value of 7.3 from here Alright, so if I put in the values of R1 and R2 as 7.7 .7 and 7.3 in the above diagram, you can see the bending moment at X, this figure here, will be equal to 7.7 .7 multiplied by 4 minus 4 by 2. One is positive because it is acting clockwise and the other one is acting anti-clockwise. Alright, so this is bending moment, so that will be 7.7 .7 one is acting upwards and the other one is acting downwards I'm sorry about that all right so 7.7 .7 by 4 is acting upwards and 4 is acting downwards so the bending moment at x will be 7.7 .7 multiplied by 4 minus 4 by 2 all right which is equal to 22.8 kilograms similarly the bending moment at z will be 7.7 .7 multiplied by 9 why is it 9 because you can see if you this is r1 which is 7.7 .7, and if you take the distance up to z, it is 2 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2, which is equal to 9. Then the forces acting downwards is 4 multiplied by 7 because the distance from 4 kilograms to z is 7. That's right. And then 6 multiplied by 4 because the distance from the 6 kilogram to the point z is 4 minus 5 by 2. Again, for the same reason, the weights are all acting downwards. And those are negative the one which is acting upwards that is r1 is positive so if you mathematically add it up and then subtract it the answer you will get the bending moment you will get is plus 7.3
kilograms. So that's how you calculate your bending moments and shearing forces about a for, uh, horizontal beam. And uh, these are the definitions. This is the theory behind it. These are the reasons behind it. So in future, I will take up some more numericals about this and show you how to solve it, how to calculate, how to draw the diagrams and obtain the bending moments and shearing forces from the graphs. Uh, let me know what you thought about this video and I'll see you soon.